what we can do to make every process faster. Because today we have like, okay, we may, we have to make a decision. It takes three years. Mm. Three years today. Which we don't is have definitely bullshit in exactly. this tempo we need to do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we want to help them do that and we want to, to make this uh, switch mm. uh, to fossil free and climate neutral. We don't have that much time and I think that's why we need to look at structure that we have thought about as fixed, as dynamic. Mm. Maybe we can change that. And I mean, there you get the awesome button. Yeah. Good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think the one of the main things standing in our way is, is, is mainly in people's head. Uh, I think that people look at uh, the, the structures today and, uh, as I said, see them as fixed. I see them as dynamic. It's, people have created the structures. We can redo them. So. Welcome back to yet another episode of The Switch. Not just another podcast, but actually a way to educate you, to entertain you and to make sure that you are a part of the transition that we so much need to go for. I am here today with some exciting guests as usual. A reminder, first of all, remember, we are making sure to elevate things awesome. to celebrate things that are good and that's why we're pushing the awesome button but when we want to challenge something when we think that something is really not correct then we go bullshit. you got it bullshit button i kind of like that it's like the thing i long for every week i come back what i also long for every week i come back is to be able to share these things with you and i hope that you do so as well that you share every episode to someone that needs to know more, that can be educated, or maybe hopefully also entertained on the way to school, in the car, on the bike. I don't know where you are, but uh, I hope that I'm with you uh, in a good place. Also remember to subscribe and to comment so that we get your opinions. We really need your help to make sure to do the switch. <laughs> I am introducing the project maestro and energy market scout at Energy Capacity. With a background as an energy market consultant at Sveco, she worked on fascinating projects like Stockholm's flexibility market, Stockholm Flex. She has a master's degree in engineering, specializing in energy systems and IT from Uppsala University. Well, that's a renowned university here in Stockholm, just so you know. She, is, uh, she has expertise that spans market analysis, tradition, transactional assignments, making her a wizard in the energy industry. At Ingrid Capacity, she continues to work her magic scouting. And I'm going to tell you more about the scouting thing because there is something more there, I promise you. For new opportunities and orchestrating projects with ease and charm. Her name is Lisbeth Eshon. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I think that calls for awesome. Uh, yeah, you want to try awesome. it? I want to try it because I'm usually not that quick with the buttons. Awesome. Okay, good. <laughs> you can try that one as well, just to make sure. Oh, yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good for you. Yeah. I'm very happy to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. A scout, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So uh, when I was uh, younger, I, I was a scout. So I learned like how to make a fire and how to cut wood properly and uh, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I know there's something called like scouts honor, right? Yeah. So you will speak truly, truthfully and honest in this podcast today. Scouts honor. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, and it's most of all, uh, um, uh, always prepared is the motto. So love that. Always prepared. Always prepared. Is that how you do it? Yeah. Always prepared. Yeah. There we go. Uh, we actually want to get to know you even more, Ingrid. So I would like to start by rolling the wheel of questions already now. Are you ready for that? Yeah, I'm ready. There we go. Wheel of questions. <laughs> What did you want to be when you were a kid? I, I actually had like two dreams that were quite uh, different. I either wanted to become uh, an accountant or a war correspondent. 
I, I don't know, like... Accountant, co work correspondent. Very safe, very unsafe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was mostly uh, accountant because I like to play with like uh, paper and uh, write stuff and play with scissors and uh, staplers and everything. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, accountant seems like a nice job. Uh, and then um, uh, war correspondent because that's like you saw it at, uh, on the television. Mm -hmm. I was like, that seems like a cool job and you get to travel and be uh, where stuff happens <laughs> even though that's war but yeah well you're a bit in a war market now as well because we really need to do something and we need to do something fast so mm. maybe mm. you know yeah. both sides yeah. here who knows that's cool <laughs> let's move into that i mean you come from sveco mm. correct and you've been working with the flex uh, flexibility markets mm moving into Ingrid capacity. What made you come to Ingrid capacity? Well, actually, I, I had been thinking like what what like um, part of the energy industry uh, do I find maybe the most interesting? And I started thinking about energy storage and uh, battery storage in particular, because that became more of a relevant topic. Mm. Um, and I got the opportunity, um, Niklas, who, who called me and asked if I wanted to come to Ingrid. And uh, I, I, I thought it was a very great opportunity to come into a company that was had like so many uh, different possibilities ahead of it. Mm. And I wanted to, to take part in that journey. And I'm very happy that I made that decision because it's been... It's been very developing and uh, very fun. Wow. Tell, tell us more about uh, Ingrid Capacity. What's your vision? So Ingrid Capacity is a infrastructure company that uh, develops, owns and operates an energy storage. And primarily the focus right now has been on battery storage. Mm. Uh, we see that as a commercial uh, doable technology for now and maybe in the future it will move on to other technologies but that's what we have been focusing on right now and we're going to deploy 400 megawatts uh, in the Nor Nordics over the co coming years. That's a nice vision to have. Can you explain how battery energy storage exactly works for someone uh, who doesn't? Yeah exactly so so um, battery storage is I, I mean, everyone knows like how a battery looks exactly. and, and, and the basic ideas of it. Uh, but but the, the main function of a battery is uh, it's, it's um, uh, electrochemical. So what you do is that you, you translate chemical energy into electricity. And you can have a time lag between the charge and discharge, which means that you're able to shift the energy in time. And this has become even more increasingly interesting and the demand has gone up since we see a lot of new renewables and the shift from fossil fuels and sources that we have been able to use to, to uh, uh, produce electricity in time whenever we want. But we are now moving towards a future where we're more independent on renewables that are intermittent, which means that we are not able to control when it's produced. So we have to have some sort of resources in the grid that can help stabilize and balance these these load shifts. So what you mean is like sun, for example, from sun you can get energy, but when the sun goes down, the energy stops. Uh, yeah, exactly. Power source stops, and that's when we start using the batteries then. Exactly. So for example, you can charge the battery during the night and you can discharge it during the day, uh, especially during the morning and the uh, evening when the, the demand is at its peak. Mm. So that's when you have uh, one of the like, like largest uh, benefits from the batteries. But you can also use it in a larger sense. You can, uh, you can help and boost the grid, the transmission capacity. You can also help the resilience in the grid because you have batteries and you know it's always good to have a backup, right? Mm. So that's what uh, batteries can be. It can be like a backup in the, in the grid and also help to efficient make the grid more efficient overall mm. i mean it sounds like a no-brainer to go 
to to this, but how come it hasn't been bigger before? Well, I mean, it is big, uh, bigger around the world. In Sweden, we have had a great privilege. We've had hydropower for many, many years, uh, and we haven't really been had that kind of demand for for more kind of uh, flexible uh, resources in the grid. Mm. But now we're looking towards a future where the industry want to to make this great transition into fossil free um, like industry processes. And what we see then is that we need to increase all the the power of the grid. We need to increase the the transmission and the infrastructure. We also need to increase the production. But energy storage also have a great place in this because we can't be reliant on hydropower because we can't uh, really make more than we already have because mm. we have made that decision that we're not supposed to to uh, to increase it. Let's let's go back to what you just said. Can you elaborate? Explain that a little bit more. Yeah, so what I mean is that there was a choice that Sweden made that we're supposed to protect the rivers and not exploit them any further for hydropower. Mm. And that's because you want to protect other aspects like biodiversity and mm. so on. So what's the next step then? Yeah, so the next step is uh, looking towards other solutions. And that's where, for example, batteries come in. Uh, so I would say that that's an important part for for continuing the the, the tr transition that we're doing in Sweden. Mm. Uh, and we see a demand increase that is uh, growing rapidly. We see industries that are crying out for more electricity. And they're saying that we need it now. Uh, and I mean, we can build out uh, production and the infrastructure, transmission lines, we should do that also. But I think that it's more efficient to also elaborate or to, to use energy storage as part of that solution. Mm. What has been the issue so far? Uh, the issues for, for batteries. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that if you, if you look at what's happening more globally. Mm. Uh, you see the UK, I think they installed about over 800 megawatts uh, last year. Mm. Um, you have these great uh, large scale battery energy solution systems in the US, Australia, China. Uh, they have already started that process several years ago. Mm. And that's because they were changing from fossil fuels uh, to renewables and they saw that their demand for these kind of flexible resources were growing very rapidly. Mm. So they have already started that kind of transition. In Sweden we haven't really seen that as I said before because we have had hydropower which, which is uh, great. I mean mm. uh, Sweden was uh, built on long-term storage and it has been a great privilege for us. Uh, we'd have uh, we've had the low electricity prices for a long time and now we're looking towards other types of challenges so i would say that the for us to move forward it's just that we have to make the decision that we want to facilitate the the industries that are trying to make this transition in sweden that are that are kind of driving the demand that we're seeing mm. and uh, i think that there is all already a great um, uh, big volumes coming out in Sweden. Uh, we see it every day. It's um, more presentations of uh, new products, com projects coming out. So I think in the next uh, one or two years, we'll see a great uh, increase in Sweden as well. Mm. It's just that we have had kind of a different history than some other countries. And also like the UK, they, they have similar issues as uh, US and Australia that are shifting towards renewables. And they have also had these kind of big, large scale systems already. And uh, these volumes are growing globally as well. We're talking about large, rapid growth in, in the coming 20 years, I would say, of energy storage. And, and battery storage is one of the main technologies. You mentioned uh, bat battery storage as being one of the things for energy storage, in a sense. Mm. What are you working more on? 
Uh, currently, uh, Ingrid Capacity is looking mostly towards battery storage. Uh, that's what we're seeing as the most uh, commercial, commercial doable um, mm. technology right now. But in the future, we will continue to, to see the de development. Uh, hydrogen might be some years ahead, but uh, I mean, that could be interesting. Um, uh, pumped hydro is, is coming in some places, but I mean, that's also kind of the matter of exploitation. So mm. uh, we're open for other uh, solutions as well. Interesting. Let, let, if we go back to what do you, what do you need for building the infrastructure for, for this large scale, scale battery energy storage? Well, I mean, mainly it's not that much different than building, say, uh, a power plant or, or, or something like that. It's mm. you need a, a piece of land where you can place it. If you if you put it really simple, it's uh, you need a place of land and you also need uh, grid connections. You need some capacity in the grid to 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 place the um, the site there. Yeah. So, what are the are there any challenges in this, or is it? I mean, one of the challenges that we see in Sweden is that it's, as I said, it's 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 a relatively new technology here, mm. even though we've seen this uh, kind of development in other countries, it's quite new here, and that means that there's not that much knowledge uh, from the from the like DSOs and uh, and also municipalities that uh, so there need to be a lot of educational work uh, to be done to get everyone to understand what kind of technology it is, uh, um, how it's operated, and so on. So that's maybe one of the challenges, and and the, also the uh, the regulations aren't really formed for energy storage mm -hmm. right now and battery storage. So it sounds like you need to educate both the public and yeah. the government, yeah. in a sense. Yeah, well, I how, think. If you would, uh, you have my mother here in front of you, how would you like to educate her on this topic? What would you say? Um, well, I, I guess I would say the things that I've been saying so far. It's not that, uh, it's not an entirely new technology. It's uh, been done over the world. Uh, it's huge in, in the countries that has had uh, challenges like a couple of years ahead or before us. Mm. And I mean, you know, the, the, everyone knows what a battery is. Mm. And it's kind of like, okay, you take a battery and you increase it. And you know it, it can be charged and dis discharged and that will if, uh, make the grid more efficient mm. and that's like the, the main idea is to make everything more optimized. My mother would probably ask a question like uh, it sounds interesting but I would not like it in my backyard so how do you select locations for these large energy storages how do you think about that part? Well I mean uh, choosing uh, suitable sites is, is one of the core in, uh, in our company. Uh, so I would say that we have um, maybe the best uh, way of doing it, but uh, unfortunately we it's a secret right it's now. A secret yeah. sauce? Mm. Mm. That sounds mm. exciting. But uh, would it, if, if I ask you then, would it affect my mother or are the locations on places where they're not far away from cities and how, how do you... Um, I mean that's that's one part of it, but one of the 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 best uh, way of doing it is to have a, a conversation with a municipality and mm -hmm. with people uh, in the local site that knows where it's probably most suitable. So that's one aspect of it. Cool. So now you educated my mom. What would you like to say to the politicians that uh, you need? What I need uh, to yeah. Uh, what do you want to, what do you, how do you want to educate the politicians? I think that one of the main things is that energy storage and batteries need to be more incorporated into the long-term plans. Mm. Um, when we're building the infrastructure, when we're building the energy system, batteries and energy storage is such a core part of it. I think it's necessary to have it in the conversation. It's not like a, a sub um, like discussion or whatever. It's, it should be like a core item because if you want to efficient how the energy system is built and energy storage can maybe 
um, improve the use of transmission lines, you, you might not have to overdimension production, um, then of course it should be part of like the long-term plan. And I think it's important that we have this kind of vision to, to be able to reach the goals that the industry has set up for themselves. And I mean, we want to help them do that and we want to, to make this uh, switch mm. uh, to fossil free and climate neutral. Mm. Um, so I mean, that's one key aspect I would say. I came back yesterday from the Nordic Coalition meeting for clean tech, which was quite interesting. And what they're aiming and focusing on really is to put together all the flexibility makers, uh, energy, geothermal, um, wave power and so on, because the feeling in the group is that they're not heard. We're still just talking about two solutions, nuclear and wind. And there are a lot of different other solutions to solve this that don't feel that they are heard or listened to or get the right attention in order to move forward. Do you feel that you fit into this group as well? I mean, I think energy storage as a whole and not just focusing on production is a main question for making the optimal energy system. We shouldn't just be talking about should we have this production or this production because the risk is that however we we choose to to uh, if we want to make more nuclear or more wind power the risk is still that we overdimension mm. the system and i think that it's more for the society it's better to have an optimized and efficient system than overdimension it because we can't decide on which type which type of power we want uh, i think that energy storage in itself is a part of the infrastructure and it will help to to build out an optimum energy system. If, if you would say then, where is the energy storage market today? How does it look? Uh, well, as I said earlier, it's, um, it's quite different uh, depending on where you look. So if you go to, to um, the US, Australia, China, Canada, which are countries that are ahead of us in terms of battery storage. Um, I mean, they are still in the in the expansion fa phase. Uh, they have large systems, but the, the rapid the growth is extreme. And I mean, the, the volumes that we're seeing being installed and produced uh, is massive. I think Australia had like two gigawatt hours uh, under construction last year. And these are the types of, of volumes we're talking about right now. And we're, we're still seeing an increase there. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, it's... Uh, we're definitely in an expansion phase. Some countries are, are a bit ahead of others, like Sweden. But as I said, that's uh, motivated of the, by the hydropower that we've had so far. Mm. But also in Sweden, we're seeing a large interest in uh, battery storage and energy storage. storage. Uh, so I think we will see big volumes coming out uh, in the couple coming of uh, years. Not at least from Ingrid capacity. Interesting. You gave us something to now, John. Here, uh, what do you think that large-scale uh, battery energy storage system needs to do in order to become and reach that large-scale global deployment? I mean, as I see it right now, it's already being done. Uh, we are building these large-scale systems in a lot of countries, mm. and some are are picking up the pace. We're seeing more and more countries in uh, Europe, for example. Uh, not at least uh, Sweden, but we're seeing it in Italy, France, Germany, Finland has uh, some, a couple uh, systems also. So we're seeing that this is happening and it's just a matter of time of, of when we reach uh, another type of dimension and another type of volume. But as I see it, it's already happening. We're in the middle of the, in the increasing phase. Is it happening for you or is it happening for renewables together with you? What would you say? Mm, I mean, the, the renewables are also expanding. So, I mean, yeah, there, there is some correlation between the need of energy storage and the, the increase of renewables. So, I mean, in countries which have been very fossil fuel dependent and going towards a lot of renewables, they're meeting new types of issues that 
energy storage will be a very important part to solve, uh, not the least in the US, in California. Uh, we've seen this in Australia, which also have like a very, um, the structure of the grid is kind of special. So they have like key bottlenecks that are very uh, good to solve with um, uh, batteries. Mm. So there we see these types of large scale batteries already. Mm. Interesting. So if I if I read a little bit between the lines, I mean, there are many markets out there. Every market is different. And that is one of the bottlenecks for the energy system in general, that everybody has a different solution and different bottlenecks. Do you think that energy storage through batteries is the way to solve it? I think that batteries is one part of the solution. I'm not saying that we should only uh, build out the batteries. Uh, I think we need more infrastructure, we need more transmission lines, but the lead times we're seeing today are from a couple of years up to 20 years if uh, you're unlucky. Uh, and also production, you need more production. Batteries are not a production um, plant. Mm. That's just how it is. But it's able to to as i said it also has its part in the in the system mm. um so i mean yeah yeah good interesting is there any uncomfortable conversations that you see need to be had when it comes to public uh, governments is there anything that needs to be done uh, in order for us to move faster uh, yeah, I think so. I, I think that some of the structures that we have set up during the last hundred of years uh, is built on the on the assumption that we won't have to expand the grid in such pace that we're standing for today. So I think mm. really I think we have to question a lot of things that we're seeing as as like the core of the, the functioning right now, like how the actors work together, how the regulations are placed. They are placed there for one under like a certain situations, but now we're standing in front of a future where we're supposed to make this great expansion in, in 12, 20 years. Mm. I mean, this calls for like going through how the system is, is, uh, is displayed or, or how the, a layout is. Mm. I mean, I, th I think we need to, in general, look at what we see, what we can do to make every process faster. Because today we have like, okay, we may we have to make a decision. It takes three years. Mm. Three years today. Which we don't is have definitely bullshit in exactly. this tempo we need to do. Yeah, exactly. So we don't have that much time. And I think that's why we need to look at structure that we have thought about as fixed as dynamic. Mm. Maybe we can change that. And I mean, there you get the awesome button. Yeah. Good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> can you give an example how that needs to happen? I mean, I think that we have to have a discussion of long term, how do we want the system to, to become? What is our vision? I'm kind of lacking this sort of, I mean, right now, as you said, we're stuck in, in a place where we're discussing wind power versus uh, nuclear power. Mm. Maybe we want to discuss a greater vision uh, mm. in 10, 20 years. Where do we want to be? How do we want the entire system or society to look like or fun function? Mm. Uh, and I think that's like an important, important part of it. Yeah, because I guess that that's the elephant in the room, because there are many solutions. This is, Ingrid Capacity has one solution, which is really good, that can move us forward. It can actually be a big help in the transition and the switch we need to do. Mm. But in order to do so, we need to remove all the bottlenecks. Mm. So I, I think that this is really a discussion that needs to be had. Do you get the help, the need to push this forward from society? I mean, we've seen in the last one or two years that the interest for energy and the energy systems have increased. Mm. Uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if we've seen the entire consequence of, of that interest uh, growing. I think that maybe the consumers will also make more uh, ask more questions uh, and they understand that if we want to have lower prices, we have to build an optimized system. So mm. then the, the like tension goes towards the politicians. Uh, how will you make this system where we can have uh, an optimized system, low electricity costs, low grid costs and so on? 
so I mean, I think it's like on the way because people are, are maybe their, their interest is growing. That is good because we have a generation coming that we need to be able to answer up to. And that's actually what you are going to do now. Oh. <laughs> yes. Are you ready for questions from the future? Yeah. Here we go. Questions from our future. Do you believe we can make the change needed? Um, yeah, I think so. I think the, one of the main things standing in our way is, is, is mainly in people's head. Uh, I think that people look at uh, the, the structures today and, uh, as I said, see them as fixed. I see them as dynamic. It's people have created the structures. We can redo them. So I think we, are, we can do what we want. We just need to, to, to change the, the mindset. How do we change the mindset on people that are sitting on power and are a bit fat and happy and don't want to change so much? I mean, we need to, to, to raise the, the question and start a discussion. And um, I mean, as I said before, education is, is one way of doing it. You need to, to inform people about what we're seeing and what challenges there are. Uh, and I think that there are some people who can make uh, big changes also, like um, individuals who have a lot of power and um, in, the, in the energy sector. People listen to, to other people. Uh, I think it's important that we all like change our mindset and I mean that's like how we speak about things. It's, mm. it's important that we in our discussion can, can think about okay no we can't do that because, uh, because of this regulation okay but what if that regulation were to change? Mm. Uh, you have to go like a bit further. Um, so I guess starting the, the, the conversation um, and uh, hopefully you have uh, people in the, the politicians who are interested to hear what people from the industry are hearing and open to, to changing and uh, uh, being more open to alternatives. So tear the regulations down if needed. <laughs> I like that. Good. Thank you very much. I think that uh, uh, our younger generation is happy with your answer because it gives them courage and I think hopefully also curiosity to, to ask those questions. Mm. Yeah. Another segment that we actually enjoy very much is what we call the uncomfortable conversations. Mm. <laughs> Uncomfortable conversations. So one discussion that tends to come back is the impact on the environment. So in that case, what is the impact of large scale battery? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, an open question, but I mean, um, that's a topic that you have to have in, in all infrastructure uh, buildings. So yes, it takes up some uh, land area. The, the areas are quite small. Uh, you can compare it to other types of power plants and uh, wind power that you need to spread out. Also transmission lines, which you have to have long kind of land uh, paths uh, mm. to, to get by. So the exploitation there is, is quite, quite big. But I mean, one of the main things I think we need to, to have a conversation about is also, like I was talking about earlier, like how do we optimize the system? Because we don't want to overdimension things because then we are just kind of over exploiting uh, land and uh, environment and the biodiversity. So, I mean, building an optimal system is, is, is what we think is the, the core here. And you shouldn't overbuild battery storage or energy storage as well. And that's kind, kind of why we need this long term vision where how much do we want to have? What do we see is the need so we can get to those uh, numbers. Um, but we don't want to, to overbuild production or transmission lines because that's also exploitation of the environment. <laughs> Another thing that always comes up when it comes to when we talk about batteries is minerals uh, and, and the extraction of that. Is that something that you see as an uncomfortable conversation to have? 
I mean, I think that's a conversation that the entire energy sector should have, because what we're seeing right now is that we're, like I said, we're building out uh, also transmission lines, we're building out uh, wind power, solar power, uh, that also drives the, the demand for these types of minerals. There will be a lot of demand for iron. We have a lot of iron, lithium, we have that as well. Uh, we need to be a bit creative, maybe. We need to start uh, other sourcing sites for these types of minerals. Uh, what we're also seeing is uh, new technology. Mm. So, I mean, what the, the, the battery technology that we're using right now might be entirely different in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. In comparison, the batteries going towards stationary batteries are in vast uh, minority compared to the batteries volumes that are going towards the transport sector. Because mm. that's the biggest demand is from the transport sector because you need to electrify the entire uh, vehicle sector. Mm. I think, yes, it's uh, a discussion that we should have. Uh, and we should have it uh, in the entire sector because we want to be able to build out the entire system, mm. not just stationary batteries. Is it, is it possible today to know where minerals come from? Do we have the, uh, the circular economy in, in that part? Uh, we, yeah, we also have uh, in the in the circularity. We're, we're also uh, some a part of what we're seeing right now is also the the recycling of um, batteries. So what we're doing is also where what you can do is that when you have used batteries in the vehicle or transport sector, you can also reuse them as stationary batteries and you have to increase some kind of uh, security system. They might be a bit uh, more. Um, like not as stable, but if you increase the, the security there, then there's basically no risk, so you can reuse them as well. Mm. Uh, but I mean, I think that's that's a conversation that we should continue to have. And I mean, uh, I think that can Ingrid capacity say that you are safe with the, your own production, that you know what everything is coming from, that is is uh, according to standards and yeah exactly so what, what a good way of, of doing this is, is going by these type of uh, certificates and, and standards and uh, um, and we're, we're doing a, a lot of work with our suppliers and uh, uh, we are able to to put forward demands from our side of uh, what we need to feel uh, or what we need to know to feel safe with the with the supply that we're having basically mm -hmm. I think that that uh, in, in itself is a very important discussion. Everybody needs to put pressure on everyone so that we know where things come from and that they are what they say they are. Mm. Otherwise, it's not going to be the renewable or that good force that we want it to be. Mm. Uh, is there anything you would like your industry to do more or less or differently here? I think that the, it's important to, to continue to have the conversation and to track the, the research that is being made. Uh, we also want to keep on make the technologies more efficient. So we want to decrease the amount of minerals necessary because mm. you can also make, if you, if you improve the technology, you don't need as much uh, materials. Yeah. So, I mean, that's also a part of it. And you al always want to push the suppliers to have high standards. Uh, you want to bring forward the re research and uh, continue to like efficient uh, the materials and the technology that you're having. Mm. And, and uh, one important part in, uh, in stationary batteries is that if you compare it to vehicles, you don't have a question uh, in the same matter of weight and uh, size. And that means that you have a whole other type of uh, uh, different materials that you can choose from. Because one aspect when you place a battery in a car is that it can't be too heavy or too big. You don't have that question as much when it comes to stationary batteries mm. that you just place on the ground. And what would the next step be? What are you asking from your industry from to the next step to handle this even better? 
I mean, I think there will be become even more of like industry conversations about this mm. and initiatives of how to work with these types of questions. Uh, and I think that's important because you need to, to uh, source where there are uh, materials you can have. So I think that it's important to, to have this kind of industry meetings and uh, initiatives to, to continue this um, development, I guess. Who's responsible for making that happen? I would say the entire business. I mean, I mean some, you, you get some maybe demands from from the EU uh, or uh, the, the regulations uh, also set some kind of frames. But I mean, the, the, the industry as a whole should always strive to, to have the, the best solutions. Mm. Absolutely, I agree with that. Uh, I think that uh, it's all of our responsibility in so many ways, definitely from the industry to push themselves forward, but also from, as we talked about, policy regulation, government, uh, other industries, uh, flexibility makers, but also the audience. So you are also involved in this, you, the listener or the viewer. <laughs> We are coming to an end. What would be the summary for you about this conversation? What did you learn? What do you bring with you? One of the main things that I've been thinking about is like, I think that we have to change our mindset a bit mm. and not be as focused of, of like what has been, but look towards the future and what we can do and, and not see things as, uh, as the, it's not possible because it's always possible. You just have to find a way through it. Mm. Um, I guess that we have like some positives towards the, the future. I like that. Uh, ending on a positive note and you're going to be able to end on an even more positive note because you're going to be able to give some sunshine, uh, a segment where we give you the possibility to tell uh, something about someone else, a company or initiative that you would like to elevate and make sure that everybody else heard about. Who would you like to give sunshine to? Uh, I would like to give sunshine to my colleague Michaela, who's with me today, for uh, s focusing and uh, structuring our, our group, who's kind of, uh, sometimes we're, we're a bit all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you always need that kind of a person uh, around you. Uh, great. Well, we are, as I said, coming to an end. Any last thoughts? Uh, no, thank you for having me here. It was uh, nice uh, chatting with you. It was nice chatting with you too. My sunshine goes to you, of course, for being here and for making sure. Yay! <laughs> making awesome. sure that we actually talk more about this topic and inform everybody. So I hope that you also got educated now and that you have some more information on how you can help make the transition to a better world. It's all about making the switch and we need to do it together hand in hand. That's how jolly it will be. My friends, until we meet again, make sure to subscribe. You know what I'm going to say. Write in the comments, help us uh, have a discussion together with you so we, more, we know more about what you think and what you want more. And in the end, share this episode to someone that you believe uh, will treasure it and will learn more about it. Until we meet again, take care of yourself and if you can, someone else. See ya!